get the second half of a story. We got the first half last Sunday. If you were here with us, we talked about Jesus going up the mountain with his disciples. And what happened on that mountain was unlike anything that had ever happened before. Jesus was transfigured in front of their eyes. He was blindingly white, shiny, awesome to behold. Something their human experience didn't even really have words to express. It was amazing. It was awe-inspiring. It was a powerful moment. And God enveloped them in a cloud, a bright cloud, and said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. What an experience. What a story. And then they came down the mountain. And that's where our story picks up. Jesus comes down the mountain, and what he finds at the bottom of the mountain are his disciples standing around in a crowd that is arguing with each other. There's frustration and anger, and Jesus himself gets frustrated and says, how much longer do I have to keep doing this? Keep telling you people. Anyone who believes will be healed. And this father who had brought his son for healing came and said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief and his son was healed. It's an amazing story. And it gives me hope in some odd way because I get Jesus' frustration. This weekend, uh, I got to go to a camp down in Oregon, Illinois, with a bunch of young people who are just amazing. Let me tell you, uh, we have some amazing leaders in this congregation. And these young people were selected to begin a new ministry in the Rockford area. Youth Connect is a group of um, youth leaders from across the Rockford area that are coming together to start something new. And we're calling it Second Sunday. On the second Sunday of every month, high school youth from across Rockford are getting together at Katie's Cup to uh, do ministry with one another. It's called peer ministry. So we're training these leaders to do what they're already doing, giving them skills and tools to build relationship, to be able to talk with one another, to be able to reach out to adults when they need someone to walk with them. But these young people are already supporting one another in schools when life happens, right? When the crises come, youth tend to lean on one another. And we want to be there to walk with them, to give them the tools and the support and the strength they need to do that well. So peer ministry was born, and here we were this past weekend at LOMC training our first group of peer ministers, and it was amazing. It was awe-inspiring to watch this group of young people that didn't know each other build relationship, get to know one another, and plan out exactly how this ministry is going to go. They took ownership of it, and we as leaders were kind of hoping that they would get through planning the first, second Sunday that will be September 10th. 
That took them about five minutes, and then they planned the next three. I mean, these people are awesome. And I saw God working in their midst. And it was awe-inspiring and wonderful to behold. And then I came down the mountain. I got home from our awe-inspiring experience, and I looked at my phone, and I saw post after post of my friends and colleagues who work on the East Coast, who I know well, who I love and trust, that had gone on a very different trip this weekend. They went to Charlottesville. And I don't know if you know what's going on in Charlottesville right now, but there was a protest around a statue that is due to be taken out. It's a statue of Robert E. Lee, the man my grandfather was named after. And my son, Michael, was named after my grandfather. Michael Robert, Kaz Michael Robert Novak Patterson. My grandfather is Robert Lee Kazmaier. So there I was, just down from the mountain and reading post after post from my friends who had gone to this place to be a part of a counter protest. You see that protest for that statue turned into something else. It turned into people standing up to say that white people were better than everybody else. And my friends and colleagues went to stand on the other side of that line and say very clearly that God made us all in God's image regardless of who we are or where we were born or the color of our skin, we are all created in the image and likeness of God and we are loved no matter what. And they went to make that bold witness and stand in peaceful protest on the other side of that line. And unfortunately, if you've seen the news, you know that things got violent and people were hurt. And I was sitting there wondering, are my friends okay? And they are, praise be. But I know that there are people that were hurt and even killed. And it breaks my heart and it makes me angry and frustrated. to know that God's love can be misunderstood in that way, you know? That we still get it wrong sometimes, myself included. I get that frustration that Jesus had when he came down the mountain. I get it. One thing I know, and I experienced this weekend very clearly, over and over again, as we were gathered around together in prayer, as we were gathered around the fire, as we were gathered on a rock saying our morning devotions, God was all around us, and God was at work doing extraordinary things. What I also know, though it can be sometimes harder to see, when we come crashing down into the valley of the reality of life, God is there too. God is just as present in the midst of the sorrow and the suffering and when we get it wrong, God is just as present and just as active in the midst of those valley moments. 
And I know, as boring and mundane as it is to feed the dog and go for a walk and make toast in the morning, God is just as active and present in those mundane, everyday moments of life, too. No matter what, God is with us. God is working amongst us. God is loving us, forgiving us, calling us out to share that love and proclaim that love to each and every person we meet. Our morning devotion, when we went to go sit on that rock, it was on the side of a cliff, about a 10-minute walk from where we were staying. Don't worry, we were very safe the whole time. Standing on this rock, looking out into a beautiful valley. But on the side of this cliff, there were all of these trees that had grown up. So you couldn't really see anything much but the trees and occasionally a little glimpse of far, far on the other side. And our morning devotion happened to be about the stuff that gets in the way of our seeing God at work in the world. And I thought it was kind of ironic because I really wanted to see the view. And I kept thinking if we could just, you know, get rid of these trees, we'd just see for miles. It would be beautiful and awesome. We could just, you know, these trees were in the way. So all this is running through my mind as our youth are sitting on this rock in silent prayer and thinking about the things that are in the way. And I'm kind of behind them trying to stay out of the way because I'm trying to get really good pictures of everything that's happening. So we have mementos of this mountaintop moment. And as I'm taking pictures, I just, I took a couple of steps to the left. And I snapped a picture and I looked up and there was a break in the trees. And I could see for miles right through the trees, I could see what I had been longing for, that view, that glimpse of God's creation shining right into that moment. It was awesome. And all it took was for me to just shift my perspective a little bit. And all of a sudden, the stuff that was in my way from seeing what God was doing, it parted just enough for me to get what I was longing for. I think that can be true for us, too. When we're in the midst of the valley and everything is going wrong and nothing it seems to be what it should be, if we can just shift our perspective a little bit and see God's active work still in the midst of all of us, God still with us doing amazing things. If we can shift our perspective a little bit even just in the morning when we're making some toast, and know that God is with us no matter what, loving us, changing us, calling us to stand up and be a voice for God's love and God's hope and God's promise that we can too when we shift our perspective just a little bit, get a glimpse of what we're longing for. Friends, God is with us on the mountain, in the valley, in the plains of our life. God is active and working and doing amazing and awe-inspiring things. 
My prayer for us this week, friends, is that we're able to see that glimpse, that brief moment, and know that God is with us no matter what. Amen.